Hi, I'm Irene Tompkinson, and I am making my second blog, which is like a great big deal for me because I would rather teach in front of an audience than talking to a camera. But I love the teaching, and I've been asked to do it by so many people. I can get, obviously, in touch with a lot more people over the video than I can in my office and in my workshops. Anyway, I'm an author. I've written two books as well as being a therapist for the last 30 years. One book is, um, my first one was Not Like My Mother. This is if you've ever thought that you weren't going to parent like your parents did. Could be not like my father just as well. Um, and you were going to give your kids everything that you wanted in a parent. What I learned, and I wish I had learned it a lot sooner, was to give my kids everything I wanted was not necessarily giving them everything they needed. Living like that, I was parenting from my history and not from my current life and from their current life. So a lot of people have found this helpful. I hope you do. It's in um, ebook and it's in print. My new book, I'll Take God, Hold the Religion, is about learning to, um, well, let me introduce, let me just read the introduction to you a little bit of it. Um, what brought me to do this book. I've been a writer for a long, long time. Putting them into books is relatively new. So here's my introduction, a little bit of it. At 21, I stomped away from the Catholic Church and God. To me, they were one and the same, and I was done with both. I no longer believed either could be trusted. From that point on, every time I said God, I choked. I had given God, as taught by my religion, my faith and trust, and for what I believed, and for that, rather, I believed I was betrayed. No, mine is not a story of being sexually abused by a priest. That didn't happen to me. I felt betrayed by my own innocence and naivete. I was sabotaged by myself. And here's how I was sabotaged by myself. I didn't pay attention to my gut. I paid a big price. I've always paid a big price whenever I didn't pay attention to my gut. So my first question I ask you is, can you relate to not paying attention to your gut? How often have you not listened to your knowing, which is what comes out of your gut, and how did that work out for you? Just think about that for a moment. What can you remember in your life that your gut was screaming at you to do something different? Or it could have been whispering it to you and you weren't listening because you were way too involved with pleasing other people or doing what you thought they somebody else wanted you to do or you're too involved in the shoulds, whatever the shoulds were that you thought you had. Let me tell you, whenever you're in a should, you're somewhere in a bad neighborhood. It's somebody else's stuff. We don't should on ourselves. We have a desire or an impression that this is what I'm supposed to do. And very often that scares us because it may make other people unhappy. So many of my clients or people who come to see me initially say, um, I get anxiety and um, it's making my life unmanageable and how am I going to get through this anxiety? And I'm already taking medication and that's not doing it for me. So I'm going to say two things about anxiety. One is, if you're under medication, I am not telling you not to take it, but I am asking you to look at the side effects of medication because if you've been on it for quite a while, very often the side effects of a lot of medications for anxiety um, is anxiety. Just look that up. The other thing is if you're on any kind of an anti-anxiety medication, you might want to talk to your prescriber about what's the exit plan because they're not vitamins. They're not meant to take for years and years and years and lots of people don't get that kind of information. That's just one thing. What I want to talk to you emotionally about anxiety is that I, um, I definitely, I guess this is what I've seen over the years. Anxiety is usually a symptom that something in your truth is trying to rise up and your fear, your personality, your however you've been on the planet says, no, 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 not looking at that. No, no, don't want to see that. No, because there's a truth rising that's really frightening you. That causes you to absolutely freeze. So you have to disconnect from yourself in order not to feel it. 
And when we disconnect from ourselves, we disconnect from all that, um, that is us at our very, very core. I can give you a big example in my life. I talk about it in both of my books. The night before I married my first husband, every single thing in my body told me, don't do this, this is a big mistake. I had gotten red flags before that night, but that night it was absolutely vibrating inside of me. And all I thought about was, oh no, there's no way I can stop this. There's 125 baked stuffed chickens they've ordered. How could I possibly tell my mother we weren't going to eat those damn chickens? So I had a beer and I just closed the whole thing off. I didn't want to look at it. Somehow I numbed all that out. That was a very large mistake in my life. And I've talked to other people who have made that same mistake the night before they got married too. I mean, obviously, there is nerves about about the night before because it's a big it's a big change and a big step. But there's a big difference between everything inside of you telling you this is a big mistake and being afraid. Anyway, um, when we're born, we're born with um, a tada. It's that life energy in us. Any child that you've ever seen that hasn't been hurt, that has been living in a safe environment, you know, a little munchkin, they're very excited about themselves. They know when you're in a room that all the adults gather to see them because they're so fabulous. That's a dot inside of them. Every single one of us was born with it. But when we spend our lives putting the lid on our own truth, on not listening to our truth, when we spend our lives doing that, then we disconnect from ourselves, we disconnect from our power. To thine own self be true or suffer panic attacks and anxiety. I've seen it over and over again. So I'm encouraging you to do a little bit of journaling and ask yourself, when in my life have I not listened to my knowing, to my gut? And what happened? All right, looking forward to seeing you next time. Namaste.